Welcome to the LHSOA basketball training video. My name is Xavier Bell and I am a member of the Baton Rouge Area Basketball Officials Association. And during this video, we will discuss effective position adjusting, freedom of movement, and traveling. Officiating basketball is all about getting the best angle to see the play. When we are taught our initial positions on the court, we know that the trail official position is at the 28 foot mark. The center official is free throw line extended, and the lead, as stated in the previous video, depends on the ball location, whether we are in closed down or in wide angle. Now understand those are our initial positions on the court, but in order for us to continue to see plays from start to finish, we have to adjust our positions in order to get the best angle. So let's check out these videos where the official effectively adjusted their position to see the play. Let's see this play again. We can see that the center official begins at the free throw line extended. Once the player in front of him receives the ball, he steps down and hustles to maintain an open look to make sure that this player went up and down without being fouled. Let's check out another clip. Cannon is up to the refs. Hayes with a good job, knocked down the three on one end of the court, got down to the other end and took the charge. In this clip, you can see that the trail official is at the 20 foot mark and once two receives the ball, he adjusts his position downward so he can maintain an open look to make sure that this player does not get fouled. Next, we will discuss freedom of movement. Freedom of movement is just what it says. A player has the ability to move freely around the court and to each position without experiencing illegal contact. Players will make contact with other players, so as officials, we have to judge plays, players' movements, and contact to deem it either incidental, marginal, or illegal, and if the player who initiates the contact gains an advantage or a disadvantage. One principle we can use to determine a foul when marginal contact is there is if a player's rhythm, speed, balance, or quickness, or RSBQ for short, is affected. Let's check out a few videos where a player's RSBQ was affected. Get a good rebound. Outlet for Stewart. Stewart's going to run against two of them. In this clip, we can see that the player who's in transition, rhythm, speed, and quickness are all affected as he makes his way to the basket. Now underneath their own basket. Out to Levy. Really impressive sophomore yeah. here, Shad Levy. He's going to get fouled. In this clip, we notice the defender affects the dribbler's rhythm as he drives his arm in the player's side, steering him in a direction that he wants him to go. Let's watch one more. Nice drive. To In this clip, we notice that the defender affects the player's rhythm and balance as this player is going up for the layup. My tip I give to you is to pay close attention to the style of play and athleticism of the teams you have that night during the first couple of possessions. But more importantly, if you have had the teams previously, pregame with your crew and let them know the style of basketball and player tendencies so everyone can be on the same page throughout the game. The last thing we will discuss is traveling, but more so the ones everyone in the gym thinks are travels, but are not. In order to correctly call a traveling violation, we first must find the pivot foot and referee from the ground up. Rule 4-44 covers what players can do when a player has both feet on the floor, when they catch the ball midair, what they can do once they come to a stop, and also talks about what a player who's just holding the ball can and cannot do. So if you haven't already figured it out, Rule 4-44 and the 10 case plays associated with it can help you out tremendously to not only correctly call a traveling violation, but also allows you to gain confidence when the entire gym thinks it's a travel. So let's watch a few clips on this topic. She can shoot that one. Has over. High school players are watching college, NBA, and WNBA players to improve their game. Therefore, moves they see, they try to replicate it. This move involves a lot of faking the opponent, and because she is moving her body parts, a lot of people will yell, that's a travel. But as the official, it is important to referee from the ground up and to find the pivot foot. Let's not penalize the player for faking not only their opponent, but the entire gym. Here's another play similar to this one. Entry pass down low.
Here is one more. True font, no good, off the rim. Rebounded by Malru, goes up strong, off the rim, gets his own miss. This play is an example of something that looks weird to everyone, but we have to know if the player has possession or not going to the floor. From this clip, we notice the player grabs his own rebound, tries to go back up for the layup, but slips, loses possession of the ball, and then the ball lands in his hands while he is on the floor. By rule, the lead official here did the correct thing by not calling a traveling violation. In closing, remember to adjust your position to maintain an open look to see the play. Allow players the right to move freely on the court without their RSBQ being affected. And don't let something that looks ugly, weird, or the spectators to fake you into thinking something is a travel when it's not. Just remember to find that pivot foot and referee from the ground up. Thank you for watching this LHSOA basketball training video.